What is up everyone? How's it going? Okay, this is a little bit of a different thing for me, so we're gonna have to get used to it. Now, basically, hang on a sec, let me turn my headphones down, that's a bit loud for me. Basically, I've got a few videos coming up. I want to reboot the gaming element of my channel, so I've got a few videos coming up, and I need to use the capture card to capture footage from my N64. I've got an N64 uh, video series coming up. Um, so what I decided to do is make this little test video, and this is going to be... We're basically going to cruise the world in Cruising USA. Whether you want to watch the whole thing or not, that's completely up to you. It's more of a test for me. But what we are going to do for the first couple of races is talk tech in terms of the capture card, etc. Um, now, what should we do? We're going to cruise the whole USA because I want to do a massive file. We're going to start a new race. I want to make it as big as possible. Uh, automatic. Now, we will chat about the game and stuff itself. Um, hang on a second, guys. Crucial decision. We'll choose this car because I think it's the quickest after I unlocked it in the last time I cruised the USA. So, here we are. Now, like I said, um, I'm going to be starting up a few different video series trying to reboot the gaming side of my channel. I'm so excited to do it. It's something I've wanted to do for ages, but I've needed the capture card and I've also needed the motivation to do it. And uh, lately, I've sort of been going through a few N64 things again, sort of rekindling my love for the console, because as you guys know, it's my favourite console of all time. And uh, the difficulty I was having with my old capture card, I don't know if any of you remember my old videos where I was using it, we're talking years ago now. The difficulty that I was having with it was amplified about 10 or 20 times um, when using a modern Mac OS. It just stopped working right after about Lion, I guess. And even when it was working properly on Snow Leopard, um, it was a pile of junk. So, at the moment, we're set up running the N64. Uh, a normal N64, not modded or anything like that. Well, it's my custom painted white one, but what I'm saying is we're using the standard AV output, but you're actually looking at footage from S-Video. Now, a few of you uh, tech-savvy, especially in the PAL region, a few of you PAL tech-savvy people may have been able to spot that we're running this on S-Video. Uh, the telltale sign is my particular S-Video cable is not the proper one. It would be the proper one in the US, but not in this country. Uh, the N64 PAL consoles differ slightly uh, to the to the wait, hang on a second. The PAL, yeah, the PAL and the the NT, NTSC consoles are different um, in terms of their resistance output with S video. So when you want an S video cable in this country, it actually has a resistor built into the cable. I'm not sure if it's just a resistor or whether there's a few other pieces of electronics as well. Um, but the cable is more complex than a straightforward video cable like I'm using now. So the footage that you're watching at the moment actually has the brightness turned down, believe it or not. It's a little washed out, but for what it is, it looks, it looks okay. Um, without having this resistor in place, the washed out, very overly bright picture is a symptom of, uh, of the problem. And also, uh, the sort of jittery picture. You may notice it's a tiny bit jittery. So to sort all of that out, um, by the way guys, my goal for this run is to hopefully get into the Hall of Fame for every single race. But yeah, in order to rectify that, um, we're, ooh, first, check that out guys. <sighs> um, we're hoping, I'm hoping to get a, a better cable, a better solution. Now I am really interested in the HDMI mod for the console, like seriously interested, whatever it's called, uh, Ultra HDMI, but it's probably a little ways from being available yet. I definitely am not skilled enough to do the mod myself, so I'll have to pay the money to get it done. But if you guys haven't seen the N64 Ultra HDMI, I highly recommend that you take a look at it. It is... It is one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time uh, in the gaming world. I think what they've achieved is magnificent. Um, so yeah, the footage is looking pretty decent for what it is. In terms of audio, you're hearing this mono. Not sure why, haven't figured that out yet. Um, I'm running into my mixer and I'm actually... I've got a, quite a sort of ghetto, fairly complex audio rig happening at the moment. Uh, just because I'm running my microphone and the game audio through my mixer. It's not an ideal setup, and I don't think I'll have an ideal capturing setup um, at all 
when I'm still living here. I'm gonna have to set everything up in sort of a much more permanent fashion um, in the new place. Now, this isn't actually going as well as I'd hoped, guys. I was hoping to really, really boss this. Oh, damn fire engine, for God's sake. Anyway, we'll come back to the tech stuff in a minute. Let's talk a little bit more about Cruise in USA. Now, I've had this game for a while. Um, it wasn't one of the games that I played back in the day. This was one of my... Maybe bought it in around 2008, 2009, something like that. I came across it in a car boot sale. I bought it for about a pound, cartridge only. And to be perfectly honest, I hadn't picked this game up properly until quite recently. And I've decided to do a run for you guys because I think this is such a cool racer. I've never played any other version. I know that the arcade version was meant to be quite a bit better than this. Um, which is pretty obvious, to be honest. The N64 was meant to be capable of a little more than it was capable at launch. Um, so the draw distance and stuff is pretty apparent here. Um, but for what it is, it's good. My only technical gripe with the game is the lack of music. Now, I know that the N64 has issues with cartridge space, but I know for a fact that this is a small cartridge compared to some. And uh, they've crammed maybe six, seven songs on here at most. I can't even remember. So, um... They do get a bit repetitive, and it's not as if they take up loads of space, they're just MIDI samples. So, I'm not even sure, but more music would have been great. At the moment, we are in San Francisco, I believe, guys, and this may be quite fun for you guys to watch because of how rubbish I am with my geography, and I know next to nothing about the United States, believe it or not. Geography is potentially my worst subject ever. I really, really do not know what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, where people live and where places are, especially in the US. But I guess I've never looked into it, I guess that's why. But I knew we were just in San Francisco, so that's good. Plus it said on the screen and I remembered it. Um, in terms of this game series, oh no, we didn't get onto the Hall of Fame. Okay, whatever. Um, in terms of the cruising series, I would love to get Cruising World. Um, but I've actually started collecting boxed games. I'm not going for a complete collection or anything, but I've decided to try and buy every game that I buy boxed, um, unless I see it locally out in the wild for a good price, and then I'll pick it up, um, if it's a loose cart for a good price. But I would love, I would absolutely love to get Cruising World, because it's not that this game is samey, there are varying factors between the levels, and it becomes more so uh, later on in the game. But Cruising World is, is pretty cool because you're actually going around the world instead of just the USA. Um, so there is more variety. I believe there was a third cruising game on the N64, but I don't think we got it in the PAL regions. So if you guys enjoyed watching me play through um, a little bit of a USA tour, then I will do the same for Cruising World once I get it. Now, these sort of gameplay videos, I don't think they're gonna be my style. They're not gonna be my sort of thing. The main reason I'm doing this, guys, is for a few different reasons. Um, and I think I'll list them just so you guys are fully aware of why I'm doing this. Firstly, I wanted to test the capture card. But of course, I could simply test the capture card myself without making a video um, and without showing you guys anything. But I want to see if I can incorporate this standard definition footage successfully into a high definition timeline without it looking completely rubbish. Now, it's likely that I'll be doing my planned N64 series that I've nearly completed, by the way. Um, I've nearly completed part one anyway, and I've scripted all the other parts. Um, it's likely that I want to be uploading that in around 720p for the best compromise between quality and not upscaling it too much because it's not as if I've got an upscaler. I'm literally recording this at standard def. Um, but the console is outputting at 240p um, or it may be outputting at 480i. It's hard to tell when you've got the expansion pack, but I don't I don't think this, this game supports the expansion pack. Um, but regardless, this console is outputting at probably about 240p. I'm recording at around 560p, so it's already upscaling there. But I'm playing... The, my viewer monitor is actually a VGA monitor. I'm using composite, uh, the composite side of the cable and converting it to VGA. And uh, it looks a lot worse than the footage that you guys are seeing. Just looking over at the computer, it looks a lot better. So there we go. Third race complete, guys. Third race complete, and I've already talked your ears off. Completely and utterly talked your ears off. 
Ah, seventh place. My plan was to get sort of like under 1 minute 50 on all of them, but that's not going to happen. I've just got too many things to talk about. So yeah, back to the list. The reasons that I'm doing this. Audio is another thing to get feedback on audio from you guys. Um, not that I'm going to be doing a lot of live talking over gameplay in this N64 series. It's all probably going to be overdubbed. Um, ah, now this level is a total bitch because of the trees and the like single track nature. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, this is this is probably the hardest, in my opinion, definitely one of the hardest. But we'll see how we can go. Uh, concentration. Concentration is needed. I do want to cover a few games on the N64, guys, um, when I'm actually not reviewing the game as such, but just playing it for the first time. Because there are a lot of games, even though this is my favourite system and I spend the most time playing this console out of any console, um, there are a lot of games that I've never played that I want to check out. So it's almost like I want to do a couple of reaction videos, etc. My first initial first impressions, etc. Now, I really don't know how this video is going to go down because sometimes in your YouTube journey, you make like a decision that you're going to do something. Like this is almost like a test, but I'm kind of incorporating you guys into the test for feedback purposes and just so I can see this sitting in the browser just to see how it looks. Um, but it's always hard to know when you do something different how it's going to go down with the audience. And one thing that I've been trying to do a lot more recently is just stick at what I believe to be correct and not allow the haters to dictate what should and shouldn't be on the channel. Not that I did that anyway, there are people a lot worse than me that listen to a lot of criticism and take it to heart and it really ruins their content. But I have had a couple of pulls this year, I guess it's with the added stress, you know, of the changes in my life and stuff. I've had a couple of pulls where it's been pretty pretty difficult at times to uh, to deal with some of the feedback but yeah once you're out with those trees I can actually catch up fairly easily so that's good but yeah I, I may get a few thumbs down for this especially because of the length of the video but the reason I'm making it so long this is another reason why I'm recording this I'm still listing by the way guys in a very elongated way um, another reason I'm making it so long is just to see how much space these big files take up even though this isn't high def still taking up quite a lot of space. I'm recording in full quality, even though it may not look like it to you guys. Um, the quality slider is all the way up. Now, do I want to get my hands on a cable? A proper cable? Yes, I do, when one turns up at a good price. Oh, second, can you believe that? When one turns up at a good price, I will. Um, but for now, we're going to have to settle with this, I'm afraid. We're going to have to do that again, folks. That's not fair, is it? I'm going to try and concentrate a little bit more this time. Maybe a bit less chatting. Redwood Forest. Okay. It's the trees. If I can get into first place before the trees start. And then just keep an eye. There we go. First place. Now, come on, Tom. Concentrate. Ah, oh, damn it. See, this game is fantastic because it's very fast-paced. Not only are the cars fast and the action is fast, but you don't, because it's such an arcade style racer, you don't have to faff around with, like, if you spin off the track, you don't have to, like, reverse around and, and put yourself back in the, you know, the, the, the system just does everything for you. You've just got to race to the best of your abilities and uh, beat everyone else. It's such a fluid feeling racer. And 90s racers are probably my favourite. That's one really groovy thing about the N64. It's got a lot of great, great 90s racers. And even though they're not perfect, as you guys can see, draw distance being a contrib contributing factor here, not so bad on this one, but in the open spaces. It's not perfect by any means, but it is really good fun. And I think Cruising World steps it up a notch in terms of quality because this is a fairly early N64 game. I'm, I want to say 97, but it's probably 98. But still, regardless, it's pretty, uh, pretty early. Now, I really hope... Oh, guys, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Also, the audio that you're hearing is going to be fairly high quality, thanks to uh, me using my very, very nice M Audio Nova large diaphragm condenser. And I think the audio side of things, apart from you guys hearing a mono signal at the moment, I think I've got everything pretty much sorted. I'm monitoring with headphones at the moment, but thanks to the flexibility of my mixer, that a lot of people think is overkill, by the way, but 
I'm pretty much using this thing to the max right now in terms of routing anyway, just so that I can send the appropriate signals to the appropriate places. Because think about it, guys. I'm sending the game audio to the Elgato software. Um, I'm monitoring the console directly, and I'm sending my voice to the Elgato software, but the, the uh, commentary bit. There we go, first place, cracking. Um, so yeah, it's a fair amount of routing, and it is mono, but that's not my fault. I could route this in stereo if I wanted to. I've got all the cabling in place. For some reason, it's just one of the RCA jacks isn't working. I don't know why. It could be my cable. It doesn't bother me at all because uh, we won't be using this cable for much longer. I want the one with proper resistance. Here we go. Tom. Stamp. Bring it on. Come on. Quite high up? No. <laughs> okay. Oh well. Not bad for my first run in front of the camera. Well, the virtual camera. Beverly Hills. Now, this looks fairly different to the Beverly Hills in uh, Tony Hawk American Wasteland, which is another game which I played a lot of. Um, not that I played that much of this game, but I played a lot of Tony Hawk American Wasteland and Beverly Hills is a little different on that game. But this one has the trees. So it's believable. And the buildings. All these big, white, big American, expensive buildings. Another nice little thing about... Oh, there's the Hollywood sign. <laughs> Another nice little thing about this particular microphone is you guys should be able to hear the faintest sound of my control stick. So it's not purely clinical. You guys should be feeling as if you can pretty much see me right now. Oh, and talking of seeing me, that's something that I've completely neglected to speak about. Um, if I ever do these kind of things in the future, where I do Let's Plays or First Looks or something, it's not really my style, but, you know, who knows? Um, if I ever do anything like this, then there will be a camera. You will be able to see me in the corner. Especially with the older games, because N64 games, as you guys know, 4x3, so there's plenty of room. I will be editing this in a 16x9 timeline, guys, of course. That goes without saying. Um, but you guys will be seeing black bars right now, obviously. I may put a little background. Maybe put... Oh, for God's sakes. That's one... Oh, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I may put a little border around the game or something. We'll see how it goes. See whatever looks best. Again, all of this is new to me. Now, just peering at the preview that you guys are seeing at the moment, previewing the recording rather, um, this is a spot in the game in which you guys can probably see the S video at its worst. Um, oh man, come on. I don't want to have to do this again. Still first though, not bad. Yeah, if you look at the lights on the top of the tunnel, you can really see where the S-Video resistance issue really oversaturates. But the reason I'm not give, showing you composite is because the composite portion of my Elgato Game Capture HD does not work. I don't think this was the best capture card to choose, guys, but it's a popular one, so support is plentiful, and so are spare parts, and I've already had to order this um, retro gaming adapter or whatever they've called it. Because I do have the component one, but that doesn't allow you to do S video, of course. You can do composite with that on component. You can change it in software. But, um, oh, getting worse and worse. But yeah, I wanted the S video. And I can always adjust the brightness in Final Cut anyway. I just wanted to, this to record um, as best as possible. LA Freeway, I believe that says. I thought it was French for a second. I'm total noob, guys. Absolute total noob when it comes to this kind of thing. So here we go. Now, you guys may notice by now that we've heard the same tracks quite a few times. But the groovy thing about this game is if I press... Ooh, hang on. Sorry. I pressed A. If I press B, you can skip tracks. So that's a funky feature and uh, something that would be very, very useful if there was more tracks to choose from. Which there's not. Hurry up. <laughs> Come on. Now this car pretty much maxes out at 150 miles per hour, unless you're going down a hill. 
in which case you can get it. Oh, that that was just pure, purely stupid. I shouldn't have crashed there. Yeah, unless you're going down a hill, then you'll go at about 155. But 150 is all I'm getting out of this car, this blue one. It's normally red, but after I cruised the USA once, um, it turned blue. I think it's faster. So yeah, if I go down a little hill here, you guys can see it just creeps up, creeps up to 153 mph there, so you can get a bit out of it. But you can see in between some of the tougher stages, you get some really nice open stages like this, and all you've really got to do is dodge oncoming traffic and uh, keep yourself to yourself. And you can see the draw distance on, on bigger courses like this, more open courses. Don't get me wrong, I'm chatting about draw distance, but it's nowhere near as bad as a game like Turok or something like that. It's just because this game is so fast-paced, you notice it. Um, and once you've been playing it for 10, 15 minutes, you don't sort of notice it that much, to be perfectly honest. Um, it tends to, you just tend to ignore it. But then if you go back to playing a racer on a different console or a racer on the N64 that doesn't suffer from as bad draw distance, then you really, really notice it. There we go. Fantastic, there is my cup. Yes, please. Hand it to me. Our cruise around the USA so far, folks, is quite successful. Tom. Also, I wanted to cover this game because I do have a large N64 library. Well, hey, first in the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, I do have quite a few games to choose from. I could have done any of the normal Mario Kart, GoldenEye, whatever. But I thought I'd choose something that people... St Death Valley. I thought I'd choose something that people have still heard of so they can relate to it in terms of looking at the quality and stuff, I guess. But also wanted to choose something that's maybe slightly less familiar. So... Let's see if Death Valley causes us any death. So far, the road is not as wide as I'd like, but that's okay. We're at our max speed of around 150. We are first place. The songs are nice and repetitive, as per usual. And I've got a feeling this course is going to throw in quite a few bends to trip us up. This track, this stretch of road this state. See, look, if you crash into a fire engine, it just goes absolutely bananas in the middle of the road. One thing that I think looks fantastic in this game is the clouds. The clouds still look really good to this day, although a bit pixelated, of course. Um, I do think they look really good, really realistic, nice shade of colour. But the sky doesn't move. If you if you take a look at the skyline now when I'm driving, the road to sky ratio in terms of relative space is quite off. You know, it still looks good, but the sky should be a lot more still if that makes any sense. Instead, it's sort of moving around all over the place. It's a bit off there. I'd be interested to see if they sorted that in Cruising World because it's not the most realistic thing. But there you go, perfect example of the draw distance right there, folks. The mountains just appeared out of nowhere. It's happened a couple of times in this race now. You may see it happening again. There you can see, just mountains just appearing out of nowhere. Oh, Tom, come on. You're letting the side down, man. Now, I imagine quite a few people have sloped off by now and they're not watching the rest of the video, but I'm going to plod on just to see. There we go, classic example of the draw distance there. I am going to try and cruise the whole USA. This train there, that looks good. I was pleased with that corner. I'm relatively happy. Whoa, no, could have done without that final spin out. Not fair. Not fair. Oh well. No point in crying. There we go. Don't think I'm going to get into the Hall of Fame for that one. That was over two minutes. Death Valley did not cause any death. No. No Hall of Fame. Now here you can see a little bit of the... S video resistance issue once again. 
uh, in these clouds. Didn't actually look over at my preview monitor on the last race. So hopefully the clouds didn't look this bad, but at the moment, they're looking a little washed out. So I really want to get the best out of my N64. Um, so that I can record really nice stuff for you guys and so I can enjoy playing. And I do have two consoles that I'd like to eventually mod. It really depends on the price of this HDMI mod. Seriously, if you guys haven't seen it, I'd fully recommend going to check it out. Um, it's called a Ultra HDMI N64, I believe, something like that. Um, but this brings up another question, I guess, and something that probably a few of you are wondering. The N64 RGB mod, the kit that will mod any N64 for RGB, is now readily available and a lot of people are doing it and the price is very good. Am I going to get the RGB mod done? The answer is probably no. Just because this HDMI thing is on the horizon and that way the console will properly scale to a high definition output source so I can use the HDMI input on the Game Capture HD and on my TV and everything like that and it still looks great, it's total wizardry. Whereas if I get it RGB modded, I'll still be dealing with a standard def signal. Don't get me wrong, the, H the HDMI mod doesn't turn the console into a high def console by any means. It's still a 240p console, but um, it's just got some magic, magic wizardry inside of it. So I would take that over the RGB mod. But if the HDMI mod is more than £150, then I will probably get one of my consoles RGB modded. Whether it's the one I'll be recording with or the one I'll be playing in my living room, I have no idea. The general plan for me, guys, is to continue using my white N64 for game capture purposes for the new gaming videos that I want to be doing. And I've got a blue and clear. If you guys checked out my last vlog, I've got a blue, that is a good time guys, proud of myself there, pat on the back. Um, if you guys check out the last video on the vlog channel, I basically showed a quick preview to a clear blue and white N64 that is going to be going into my living room. That'll be the main living room, N64. Grand Canyon, now even I know what that is. So yeah, I definitely want to get the blue one modded. Um, to be honest, I want to get them both modded. Let's be honest. I think once you've used it, I don't think you'll be able to go back. There's even an option. Um, this is how much of an advanced mod it is. You press a button combination on the controller and it brings up its own menu. And you can turn things on and off like scan lines and stuff to emulate a tube TV on your flat screen. Now that's a really important thing about the N64. The graphics, get slated a lot these days. And I'm not talking about just because of their age. Um, the N64 graphics get slated a lot more than say for instance, the original PlayStation graphics, where in a lot of instances, the N64 looks better. It is more capable in terms of raw graphical power. But the thing is, the N64 chose the path of heavy, heavy anti-aliasing. And because of that, it looks really, really good on tube TVs, CRTs. Um, but with the flat screens, it just looks really, really mushy. Um, so the fact that you can add scan lines with the Ultra HDMI is such a cool thing, I think. I don't think it's something that I'll be applying because personally it doesn't bother me, but I know it gets on some people's nerves. I know it's something that some people want. But I'd have to see. There are lots of other options in there. Um, resolution options and stuff. I'm not too sure on all the details. I'll have to watch the video again. Don't think I'm going to do as well on this one, guys. But we will see. But yeah, that's enough chat about the modification. I'm subscribed to the email um, emailing list, the mailing list. So when it does become closer to availability, I will know about it, which is good because I want to I want to be one of the first to get it done here if I can, but there are a massive queue of N64 people that basically want it done to their consoles. The entire N64 Forever forum is interested. So we are progressing steadily through touring the USA, guys, and if you're still with me at this point, 
Uh, well done, basically. Tom, stamp, go. Hey, first again. Ah, brilliant. Looks like I'm finally settling into being able to talk and play at the same time. So, now that I've got used to talking, let me chat a little bit more about other gaming things that you can expect to find on the channel. Iowa. The reason I know how to pronounce that word is because of Slipknot, the band. Yeah, so let's chat about gaming and It's My Natural Colour. Um, I know a lot of people are going to panic after seeing this video and hearing me detail so much plans and so many plans about the capture card scenario, etc. Um, but don't worry, diverse content and a variety of content has always been my goal. And I used to make a lot of gaming videos. But I always wanted to step up my game and I didn't have the resources to do that. <laughs> step up my game. Excellent. Um, but I didn't have the resources all the time to really do it back in the day. But now I do want to introduce gaming as another element. By the way, guys, these are bugs. Yeah, that starts happening at, around this stage in the game. Um, I do want to start introducing more gaming stuff. Christ, I can't see. I don't think I've ever had that many bugs before. I think it'll be a great variety. And uh, I still have a few gaming subscribers lurking around. And a few people still subscribe to me because of the N64 in the hope that I'll make some more N64 content one day. So, you particular guys, stay tuned, because I've got an absolutely marvellous N64 series on the way. It's basically going to be a buyer's guide for PAL regions, for sort of beginner buyers, or people that are buying back the system after getting rid of it back in the day or whatever. Because it's a complex world out there for retro gaming at the moment. It's not as straightforward as it's always been, um, just because certain items are commanding so much money at the moment. It's absolutely crazy. i tell you one thing that just dawned on me, guys. I didn't actually check how much space I've got left on my hard disk before recording this. Hmm, that doesn't bode well. But still, we will see. Hopefully it doesn't cut out. Because we're definitely more than halfway there now. Race complete. I reckon I'll get first again, guys. Here we go. Stamp. Let's see. Way. I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased that I'm managing to multitask. It's not the easiest thing in the world. So, yeah, in terms of other gaming content, um, now that I have Chicago, <laughs> now that I have Chicago, now that I have the capture card, I can start capturing Wii U stuff as well. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, I have mentioned it briefly in the past, but when I move into the new place, I will be having a fiber connection. It's not going to be a ridiculous balls to the walls connection, because it's only me and Jess, we don't need it. Um, so it's going to be what I think is, f what is it? It's 40 down and 10 up, I believe. So it's gonna be really, really handy. I'm gonna be able to do um, gaming videos. I hope to do gaming, not streaming, but probably streaming a couple of IMNC Mario Kart sessions, maybe. I've had a few people interested in that. I've had about 30 people add me on the Wii U. Um, maybe 20, actually. I don't think it's quite 30. But all of, the, all of those people are up for doing a bit of Mario Kart and a bit of Splatoon, so you will see live coverage of that kind of thing. So that'll be my non-retro side. Those vehicles always look like the mystery machine to me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but Wii U stuff won't be happening until further down the line when I'm in the new place. That's when I'll start capturing some Wii U stuff. And that's when you'll see the full potential of this capture card. But everyone and their dog pretty much knows what you can get out of a game capture HD these days. And I haven't bought this just for gaming. Although it is a gaming orientated platform. Um, and the software is very, very gaming at heart. I 
do need a generally better capture card than my old one for doing the VHS transfers and stuff that I do from time to time, so hopefully this will be good for that. That's another reason why I got the S-Video adapter. Folks, this one is really hard. It reminds me of um, a course. No, 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 no. Okay. I thought someone was going to overtake me then. It reminds me of a particular track on Burnout 3, I think it was, back in the day that have those pillars coming down. I'm a bit of a racing game noob for the simple reason that I don't know a lot about cars and I don't know a lot about places. Racing games are a lot, uh, obviously about cars 99% of the time and they're often about places as well. Um, like where you're racing and stuff, obviously, and that really contributes. Obviously, these games are heavily influenced by where they are. Um, where they're set, rather. But yeah, that's the sort of two things that makes me not very clued up about racing games. But I really enjoy them. I enjoy them from this view, not from like the behind the car camera view. I think this is a lot more clunky. I like this. And I'm sitting so close to the screen that I'm uh, fully immersed in this fantastic arcade racer on the N64. Now, if I ever do something of this length again, which is likely, when I do the Mario Kart tournaments, etc. I will be bringing water with me because my voice is now getting slightly tired. So apologies for that, everyone. If my voice is sounding a bit crap. I'm also a bit hungry. <laughs> slightly underprepared to do this, but it took me quite a while to get this set up and to get all the audio and stuff working properly. So I wanted to kind of just seize the moment and do it now rather than faffing about trying to get something to eat and that. But after I record this, I will definitely, definitely be going to get something to eat. Definitely, definitely. Oh, and also something else that I thought of. Damn it, he came out of nowhere. Um, I know I'm going to get a few comments being like, Oh, Tom, put the gaming videos on another channel, man. I know I said I'd never make a second channel and I ended up making the vlogging channel, but I think three channels would be a little bit far for me and I'm not that dedicated to gaming. So it's fine. IMNC is a variety platform, guys. It's all good. I promise. I know what I'm doing. I really do know what I'm doing. I think. I'm just telling myself that. So this is one of the more boring stages. Not a lot happening apart from all of these... Uh, what are they? Telegraph poles? Or electricity poles? Not too sure. Can't even remember where we are. As you can see, quite a lot of repeated textures in the background. Very, very obvious on this particular course. That barn has been repeated. I think it's a barn anyway. It's been repeated like six, seven, maybe even eight times. Ah, look, she's got her own backdrop this time around. <laughs> ah, fantastic. I think we're coming close to the end, folks close to tour in the USA and in case anyone is wondering yes that is it for the courses slash tracks slash stages in this game um, the ones that you see in this video are pretty much all the stages so that's cool probably got a couple more races I can't even remember guys okay Now, one thing I really like about this game that makes it feel very arcadey is for most of the tracks, maybe not that redwood forest or whatever it was, um, the one with the trees that I was complaining about, the one that we had to redo. Maybe, yeah, I think it was redwood something, whatever it was called. Anyway, for all other tracks apart from that one, you pretty much don't need to use the brake. Maybe you do in the future when you unlock cars that go a little quicker, I'm not too sure. But for that reason alone, because the Z button is the accelerator and the control stick is to steer, if you're running automatic like I am and not manual, then you can play this one-handed. And that's one thing I really like about a lot of N64 games. Um, especially racers, you can get away with playing lots of them one-handed. Because this is so arcadey and quick-paced, you just... Yeah, brakes aren't really a thing. 
they're not really a thing at all. And if I was coming second and third all the time, then I would probably blame my disregard for the brakes, but considering that I'm coming first in all but one of the races, I pretty much assume that I'm driving okay. And around this stage, guys, you're probably getting extremely sick of the music. Another option, of course, is to turn down the game music and listen to your own. Which uh, is still a popular thing to do these days with Spotify and stuff on the PS4, but it was really, really needed back in the day. Especially on the N64. PlayStation, a lot more storage. That's a good time. That is a good time. But yeah, I do believe they could have fit more onto this cart. But, like I said, early game. Can't be expecting too much. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. Tom. Boom. We've been recording for around 40 minutes now, guys, which is bonkers. Wasn't sure how long this was going to take me. Oh wow, I beat my previous time. By seven seconds, that's quite significant when you think about it. Ah, this one's cool, you've got all these pink trees. Where are we? Washington DC. Now, even though I said I was rubbish at places and names and geography and all that kind of thing, I know that Washington DC is the capital of the US. I at least know that much. So I think I deserve a like on the video for that. Probably just going to get a dislike for what I just said. Okay, here we go. Let's try our best to really, really, really boss this. Ooh, and another thing I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention it a lot earlier so that more people would have been watching at the time of mentioning. But, not sure if you guys know this, but Jess is also a big N64 fan. And we often play games together. We normally play um, Mario Kart, GoldenEye. Mario Tennis or recently Diddy Kong Racing. They're the games that we normally play together on this system. We also play a lot of Mario Kart 8 together on the Wii U. Um, but I will hope to do some recordings in multiplayer as well because that'll add a bit more variety, I think. And I think it'll be really cool because we get into some hilarious sort of smack talk arguments with each other um, that everyone laughs at if they hear us. And also, we play, um, before we were living back here, we played a lot of games with Jess's brother, John. And he will be joining us for some mega gaming sessions again soon, so hopefully I can get him on a couple of videos. He may even be watching this right now, but I doubt he's watching this far. Typical, uh, typical example of draw distance once again here, guys. Just coming around this corner, and you can see every tree just popping into frame at the last minute. That bridge or whatever popping into frame at the last minute. It's nothing that actually affects gameplay, it's just a little distracting. Um, but it's the nature of the console. Was that the final race? Washington DC. Look at all my stars, folks. There we go. Tom. Stamp. Ha, ah, I didn't quite beat my previous time on that one. I do have the controller pack inserted that I've been using. That's why I've got this car as well. So, there we have it, folks. Uh, coast to coast in 24 minutes, 22. So that is actual racing time. Um, yeah, that's... I think that's better than last time I did it. That's actual racing time. Obviously, this video is a lot longer because of all the in-between bits, like the leaderboard and stuff. But there I am, folks. That is that. My cruise of the USA and cruising USA. That is my first video recorded with the uh, Elgato Game Capture HD. Please give me some feedback. I really want to hear what you guys have to say about it. Um, 
I am thinking of doing a playthrough of Doom 64 at some point. If anyone is interested in that, please let me know. And also I've got those other gaming videos that I've been chatting about coming up as well. As well as loads of normal content, of course. Hey, hey there we go. I absolutely nailed my last time. 24 minutes coast to coast, that's not bad. Well, I guess it's 24, yeah, 24 minutes to 22 seconds. Or it could be, it could be counting it in like hours, but speeding it up. I don't know, whatever. Like I say, I'm not a pro. That is the game, start to finish, folks, cruising the USA. Um, hope you enjoyed. Yeah, leave comments down below, and I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll leave you here with the credits.